Hi, welcome to the farm. Today we're going to make something called angel biscuits. Now it's a cross between a, a roll and a biscuit. Uh, when I was growing up, every morning we had biscuits and gravy for breakfast. My mother made the biscuits and my daddy fried the bacon or the sausage and made the gravy. When Joy and I got married, I realized I didn't know how to make biscuits. My mother-in-law, who was a great cook, uh, taught me uh, how she made, She gave me this recipe. I've often said that I learned to cook from my mother-in-law, but I learned how to use a hammer from my mother. Mother was a good cook. She just didn't particularly like to cook, and, and consequently, neither, neither did I. So my mother-in-law gave me this recipe. It's a great recipe for a biscuit dough. Uh, uh, if you make them uh, close together and fluffy, they, they make more like rolls or you can make them separate in the, in the pan and they're more like biscuits. But this recipe, you can make up this dough and it will keep in the refrigerator for up to a week. So you can take out the, whatever amount you want, have fresh biscuits and uh, just uh, without any trouble at all. That's the way I did it in the early years. Now, the way I do it is I make the biscuits up and I either freeze them before they're baked or I bake them and then keep them in a, a plastic bag and just heat them in the microwave or put them on my husband's lunch for his breakfast in the morning. So, so what I'm going to do today, I am going to make these, these biscuits. We're going to have a, uh, a meal tomorrow night. So what I'm going to do is, is put these in the freezer and then I'll bake them tomorrow night. But the way this, this, um, this biscuit dough is made, we start with uh, two tablespoons, three tablespoons, excuse me, three tablespoons of very warm water. Now, I've let this water run a few minutes ago, so it's already pretty warm. So three tablespoons of warm water. And add to that one package of instant yeast or active yeast. Now. Yeast, uh, I buy mine uh, in bulk because I make a lot of these biscuits. So uh, the equivalent to one package is two and a fourth teaspoons. So I just keep my teaspoon mixture down in here, or measure, that's, that's where it was when I was looking for it before. So two and a half will be equivalent to, well, we just put two heaping teaspoons. And that's equivalent to, uh, excuse me, two and a fourth tablespoons of yeast or one package. Take this, stir it up in the warm water, and then just set that aside. We'll use that in a minute. Next, we take our flour. We take five cups of sifted flour, and this is self-rising. So, uh, one two, three, four, five. Five cups of self-rising flour, two tablespoons of sugar, just put that in with the flour to sift it in case there's any lumps in the sugar that right out. Sift that. This is a really fine flour. I normally use white lily for almost everything. This flour um, this came in a 25 pound sack I got at Sam's because I use a lot of self-rising flour these days. Okay, here we go. And add to that three quarters of a tape or three quarters of a cup of uh, shortening. Uh, I put fill this this use this cup measure. You can see it's not packed full, so there's lots of spaces down in there. So that's about that's about three quarters of a cup. Next, take your pastry cutter and work that shortening. Uh, I use Crisco, but use that, that shortening into the flour. 
since this flower is so fine, it makes it a little difficult to actually see when the when the shortening's all cut up in there. You just kind of have to go by feel. If it feels like you've cut up all the, the hunks of it. What I usually do after I it's not sticking to the cutter very much, so that tells me that it's pretty well cut up down in there. But after that, I'll actually just kind of feel. Yeah, that's... I used to work it in with my hands uh, to start with rather than using a pastry cutter. And the reason I don't do that now is actually the heat from your hands uh, will cause the the shortening to dissolve or to, to melt a little bit. So uh, if you can keep it in in chunks, it's, it's better for it. You just keep kind of working that around until you feel that they're all just kind of in, in small pieces. Okay, I believe that's about right. Okay, next we need two cups of buttermilk. That's why I stir up my uh, uh, yeast in such a huge cup so that I don't dirty an extra cup. Just pour the buttermilk right in with it. Stir it together. That's not in the way. All of this into the flour. And I always use a, a spatula or a, a scraper to make sure I get every little bit out. I'm just kind of cheap that way. Stewardship, that's all we call it, stewardship. I want to make sure I get all of it. All right. And again, we just start. Uh, if you've watched uh, another video I did on, on making pastry, you'll see that we just stir this around. Now, if you have a mixer with a dough hook, that would probably work really well with this. I don't, so this is just the way I've, I've learned to do it. This works well for me. So we're just, we're just stirring this around until it comes together. Sometimes, uh, well, actually, I guess I should say most times, I need a little bit more buttermilk than the two cups. If it's really dry and shaky, okay, just a little bit more buttermilk. Just keep stirring that around till it all comes together. And, and look, uh, if you scrape your fork through it to make sure that all of the, the dry ingredients, all of the flour down in there has been mixed in well. Once that is mixed well, and you, as you can see, this is, this is pretty, a pretty sticky type of dough. It's, it's not a ball of dough like we saw with our pastry. It's a pretty sticky ball or sticky mess of dough. But everything is wet. Everything is mixed well with the buttermilk. And at this point, we'll just leave it like that. You take a, uh, a cover and put over it. Uh, either put some plastic wrap over it or these little things that look like shower caps. Put over it. Put it in the refrigerator at least for a couple of hours or even overnight, and like I said earlier, it will keep in the refrigerator for up to a week. But just leave that in the refrigerator for a couple of hours and then get it out to make your dough. I mixed up some dough earlier this morning. So I have some dough ready to go, ready to make our biscuits with. Now what we'll do is make sure we have plenty of flour here on our dough board. And I found a little scraper like this just be to be really good. Put a little flour on it and scrape it out onto the flour. 
And again, I like to scrape this out to make sure I get every last bit of it. that is a very sticky dough uh, if I started working it with my hands uh, right now you can really can't see that in the video as I see as I start if I start working this with my hands it will it will really stick to my hands so I'll take some more flour and put over the top of it and I'll take this little uh, I don't even know what this is called I got it at a, at a kitchen store and just begin to work it to get together with the flour. That way I don't get it all over my hands at the very beginning. Let's see, Let's see that. Now then it's more, more workable and it won't stick so badly to my hands. All right. that around till the dough becomes more manageable See, that's made a, a nice batch of, of dough. Take our rolling pin and roll that out. Now, this is where you can decide if you want thick, fluffy, roll-like uh, biscuits or whether you want more, uh, a little thinner, more crusty biscuits. This is the recipe I use to make uh, biscuits for our church. Um, our Sunday school class is responsible for breakfast every so often. And so I will roll these out and make little tiny biscuits. I'll actually use this, this little bitty cutter because we just need a snack for that. This is not like a major breakfast that's going to last you all day long. But for these rolls, I actually use just a, a jar lid just like a canning jar lid. And I'll begin to cut these out and put them in my uh, uh, baking sheet. Now I've already greased this baking sheet earlier. And I like them, I like them a little crispy on the edges, so I'll leave space in between, as you can see. So I'll just continue to cut these out fill this uh, baking sheet, then I'll stick them in the refrigerator, and then tomorrow, uh, about, oh, about an hour before supper time, I'll get them out, put them in the oven and bake them, and they'll be great. Put a little butter, maybe a little jelly, they'll be wonderful. By the way, we'll take the leftover pieces and work that in when we work the dough back down, so. I hope this recipe will help you out. And by the way, I also use this same dough, this same recipe, to make something I call breakfast pockets. I will uh, roll this out really thin, uh, cut it into large round shapes, all about five or six inches in diameter, and then fill, put uh, uh, like scrambled eggs and bacon and sausage and, and cheese on that, fold them over and pinch them together and bake them. They are delicious to pack on lunches, to freeze, to, to eat for breakfast if you need uh, something quick before you go out the door. Uh, I have the recipe for that on my blog. That is www.newmanvalley.wordpress.com. Uh, check it out. Look for breakfast pockets. and I hope you enjoy. Thank you.